How's it going my truant people, Dr. Slacking the Slacking Doctor, back with our week 2 game for the IBL, and this week we're going up against my man Platinum Howler and his Coquitlam Red Gyarados, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, he did give me a little hand on how to pronounce it, so hopefully I got that right, Coquitlam Red Gyarados, I think. Uh, he's a fantastic guy, he's I think the newest YouTuber in the league, so please, 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 if you don't check anyone else out in the league, I implore you to check out his channel, uh, because I think it would be fantastic for him to receive some support, I was so impressed with his draft analysis, so please go over there guys, show him some love, definitely watch his side of this game, because this game, this is a good game, and I'm going to be in the comment section of, of this one on his side, watching it for sure, uh, I can't wait to see his thought on some of these plays, but this week, this week your Bolan Bovines, we're rocking Tapu Koko, Rotom Mo, Kieran Black, Nihiligo, Mega Pinsa, and Greninja. Uh, I think this is Greninja's debut this season and Rotom Mo's debut this season. Uh, I can't remember what we had last week in their places, but I'm pretty sure these are the two uh, that have come in for this week. We got some fun sets. We got some real fun sets. Shout out to my front office uh, and shout out to everyone else that helped me market stuff. They know who they are. I have fantastic friends in this community and I will never stop being grateful for that. Checkmate Ben and I are now building teams together again each week. The dream team. The dream team is back. We have a championship between us, which you guys never saw. Uh, but we, when he stayed at my house, we entered a, a quick speed tour and won the championship with a speeper on the draft. You know, the dream team, we do what we do. Uh, no, but seriously, the, the best the best seasons that we had on this channel and things like Peeper and stuff, during the best times, the best I've ever played was when Ben and I would sit and call and build together and then I would mock with all my other friends. Uh, we, we tend to be on the same wavelength and we, we rein each other in pretty well, so shout out to him. So, let's talk about the insanity that we have brought this week. This week, we have a Choice Scarf Tapu Koko, the fastest Tapu Koko you have ever seen. Uh, I know Choice Scarf Tapu Koko seems a little bit like overkill, but it makes sense against my opponent's team. He has his Choice Scarf Infernape, potentially, uh, which could outspeed my team and be very, very scary. So we have a pseudo check there in a uh, Scarf Coco. He also has the potential of Shell Smash Cloister, which is terrifying and can sweep my team. Uh, even plus two Cloister can't outspeed a Scarf Coco. And he has a Mega Gyarados, his team mascot. So we want to make sure that we can hit the Mega Gyarados even if that starts boosting up. So again, Choice Scarf Tapu Koko. Basically, it's just a great revenge killer to his setup threats. Things like a speed boost Yan, uh, Yan Mega. Uh, even if he's at plus one, we start speeding him and kill him, which he probably won't expect. So that's the kind of thinking on the Tapu Koko set. It's a little bit little bit insane. Uh, shout out to Ben, that was his idea. Uh, once he saw the close to he was like, yeah, I think we need to go Scarf Coco. And, and then we realized what else it did. And we were like, yeah, this is the right bring. We have Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, U-Turn, and Brave Bird. So this is a mixed set. Uh, I think negative is for death nature. Um, with some attack investment, some attack investment, some speed investment. We've got a little bit of everything going on this week and pretty much all the mods. Uh, but hopefully we can catch that Infernape with a Brave Bird. That's the biggest hope um, because Infernape just goes in against my team. I hoped Gligar and Grastrodon would scare the Infernape away, but it didn't. And I didn't bring either of them. So now the Infernape's here and I have no defensive checks. Woo! Uh, we do have Revenge Killers, but that's it. So the Infernape is terrifying. Next up, we have Bosch, our Rotom Mo, making his debut on the channel. Really, really excited to use Rotom Mo. This is a Defog Light Screen Pain Split Volt Switch set. Uh, pretty defensive. He has a Skarmory on his draft. This thing could take Brave Birds for days. Pain Split up, Volt Switch out, Defog away, uh, Spikes and Stealth Rocks. So just a really, really nice Defog pivot, basically. A kind of Fizz Death bulky pivot on this team. I think Bosch... Would have had a better matchup if the Skarmory was here and we were really worried about Hazard stack, but he does still potentially have rocks and T-Spikes on that Nido Queen, so you never know, that 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 Defog Pivot might come in useful. Uh, one thing that's really nice about the Light Screen is that the most likely switch in is the Nido Queen, so if we get the Light Screen up, we can go into Kieran Black behind a Light Screen. Oh my goodness, we're going to start killing things. And moving on to that Kieran Black, Infinite is here again, fully physical this week with Dragon Claw, Iron Head, and... Um... Dragon Claw, Iron Head, and Fusion Bolt. In terrain, Fusion Bolt will two-hit KO the Sylveon. We will potentially just bop a uh, Spadef Sylveon with an Iron Head. Completely Oko, that boy. Uh, we, I saw a lot of Spadef Sylveon in prep, designed to take uh, Ice Beams, etc. from Kieran Black. Does not take an Iron Head if it's built that way. Probably going to be Baberry Berry if it's defensive, uh, or if it's specially defensive, sorry, but still. Kieran Black is here to break. That's what Kieran Black does probably better than anyone in the format. So it's here to break stuff and it goes in against his team. Roost on there for longevity and quite a bit of bulk. Next up we have Nialigo and talking of bulk, Lebowski this week is a big, big boy. Lebowski has the AV and a lot of spadef. This thing just eats hits from Raikou. I'm expecting to see shiny Raikou, which means it's a rash nature with the Aura Sphere uh, to try and hit that Kirim. Otherwise, Kirim just sits in front of Raikou as well, which could be really nice if that happens. Uh, but I'm expecting to see the Aura Sphere on the Raikou. I don't think it'll have HP Ground. I think it'll have HP Grass or HP Ice for the uh, Gligar or Gastrodon. So 
that means that Nihaligo just walls it forever. Aura Sphere is not going to do anything to Nihaligo with that AV and Spadef nature. We do get a Spadef boost if we kill anything as well on the Beast boost, and then we are really, really fat. So, yeah, Nihaligo is just a bit of a tank in this game. Four attacks, obviously, with the AV. We have Grass Knot, Thunderbolt, uh, Sludge Wave, and something else psychic that's right if we want to predict the needle queen coming in we can just spam psychic it's pretty spammable against his team um and yeah we'll do, we'll do a nice little chunk to needle queen then we have the mega pincer this is a phenomenal revenge killer to the infernape as i said infernape was a huge huge problem for me in prep so i had to make sure i had a good good revenge killers to it and we have the mega pincer here uh quick attack will just decimate that thing it's also pretty spammable against this team if i can get rid of the raikou uh i can really go in and raikou probably isn't going to be running lefties or any kind of recovery it's probably not a bulky set so his one flying resist is not a great one making mega pincer amazing this matchup I spent so long getting Mega Pincer's happiness down for frustration. I think next time I'm going to run return and try and get the happiness up, see if that's quicker. But man, never never draft happiness mons in a Wi-Fi league. It takes so long. It takes so long. Anyway, this is our rocker this week. It also has X scissor for the Latte if we need to go that route. Um, but yeah, this is our rocker this week because we couldn't fit it on anything else, essentially. Um, and if I want to get brave and make a read and go for rocks on a switch out, I can do that. Um, I will only do that if I'm in the back in the game. If I feel like I'm losing and I need to start making aggressive plays, then I'll do that and get some extra chip with the rocks. But otherwise, we're just going to try breaking things with quick attack plus return and X scissor. Then last up, we have Jiraiya. This is our physical Torrent Greninja this week. You don't really see physical Torrent. You do see physical Protean or mixed Protean, but you don't really see physical Torrent. Um, and that's because mostly it's bad. But <laughs> this week, it was essential because he has that Latias. And if you look at my team and even my draft, can't my Latias 6 owes me if, if I only bring... Things that are slower than it and physical, because once it gets some calm minds up, if it starts clicking stored power, it's going to take out the Mega Pinsir. It's going to take out the Kiran Black, right? It's going to take out those physical threats. And if it's got the calm minds up, everything faster than it, Tapu Koko, Greninja, these are all special mons. So we're in a really, really bad spot if this thing gets calm minded up. So we have a physical Gren, that way we will always outspeed Latte unless it's Scarf. We will be able to bop it with a Night Slash if it is, say, max speed, max HP, which I'm expecting on a card mindset. Uh, if he is that kind of a build, we will do sort of 70% with the Night Slash uh, and about 60%, 50 to 60 with a U-turn, I think, because we do have the Expert Belt. So we will hit it pretty pretty hard, to be fair, pretty hard. And Night Slash, of course, has that high crit ratio, which could come in useful too. We do also have spikes on this Greninja and Waterfall. Waterfall being able to hit uh, pretty much everything for neutral damage, but especially that Nido Queen. Uh, being able to take that out could be really important late game because Nido Queen is a bit of a problem for my team. Then we have the spikes on there to try and chip down the Nido Queen as well, which isn't going to be taken much from rocks. So, whew, hopefully that was a fairly fast team builder. Probably not that fast. I don't know how you guys want team builders if you want me to just jump into battle and not tell you the sets, but I feel like it's best to talk through the sets. So, looking at his team, I expect him to lead it off with Infernape. It just literally claims a kill every time it comes in, so I 100% expect him to lead with it. Why wouldn't you just get a kill turn one? So, with that in mind, I'm going to lead with my Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko will do one of the two things it will either scare him out and get me chip on the Nido Queen, which could be important, or it will make him think he can stay in, especially if he's Sp Scarf Ape, which he could be. Um, and I'll Brave Bird and Oko him, unless he's Cobra Berry. So I go for the Brave Bird here, and yes, he stays in. And I'm like, watch the Berry. Here comes the Berry. It's going to be Cobra Berry Earthquake. Cobra Berry Earthquake. Here we go. Here we... Nope, no Berry. And that is a dead Infernape. We could not have asked for a better turn one. I'm going to pause it here. I know that this is like two seconds into battle, but I have to stress this. Infernape claimed a kill every time it came in. It just went so hard against my team. Getting that early KO was phenomenal. I completely understand uh, why Howler made that play, why he decided to stay in. Uh, it looks like a good matchup for him, right? He's just going to fire, the, expect to fire off the Earthquake and kill me. But no, uh, we, we do just take the Brave Bird and decimate him. So, whew, amazing turn one. Amazing turn one for us. This took so much pressure off. It means that I now don't, when I'm saying about those aggressive plays, I can now play a little bit less aggressively. The only thing I need to play a little bit aggressively is the... Um, is the Needle Queen because here it comes. I could stay in and Brave Bird here, but I still really, really value um, Coco's speed against this team. So I'm not going to bother staying in a Brave Bird, and it's not worth it. It's not going to do that much to a defensive Needle Queen anyway. I'm going to get Kieran Black in because I'm going to have to switch Coco out next turn anyway, right? Even if he rocks this turn, which he does, uh, I would have had to switch uh, Coco out this turn because he'd be going for an Earth Power. So we managed to get Kieran in before rocks go up and before he goes for the Earth Power. So we get Kieran in for free. I go for the Iron Head. It's a guaranteed uh, good bit of chip on Needle Queen, but I did expect the Sylveon to come in. It doesn't. 
as he reveals the focus blast and i'm like okay i think his set was like max hp max special attack or something because our iron head did a little bit more than i expected uh and i know that a dragon claw will kill from this range i don't ever expect to see the sylveon come in here so i do go for the dragon claw i've just shown iron head i don't think this will be the sylveon and it's the Sylveon. I mean, this was a brave play. I understand he was probably feeling a little bit in the back, having lost his ape turn one. Uh, but he actually doubles out here as I do just go for the Iron Head as he goes into the Raikou, which is actually what I thought I would see come in before. I go for the Iron Head because I'm like, okay, this must be Baberi Berry Sylveon, right? You only bring this in if it's Baberi Berry and, and you're, you know, you're risking it. Um, I want to pop this Baberi Berry. I just want to get some good chip off on it. Kiram is now really, really low uh, as the electric terrain dissipates. And I'm like, okay. He got me those few turns, right? He, he managed to get a nice focus blast off on my Kieran Black. He managed to get Sylveon in and out for free somehow. And he managed to get the Raikou in while only taking about, I don't know, was that 35% chip? So I feel like he got me those turns because I've taken a lot of life orb recoil and I've taken a big focus blast. But I'm still pretty happy with how those turns panned out, right? I still got a good 40%, 45% off on the Nida Queen, which is so important to break for Coco in the late game. And I still got you know, 35% on this, which is his only flying resist. So if I get Mega Pinsir in against something slower than it, I click Frustration and this thing's going to take another 50% probably uh, if he tries switching it in. So I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this. And I'm not going to let Infinite go down here. There's no reason to. I have my dedicated Raikou check in the back. Whilst, yes, Infinite is probably too low to ever do anything, it does start speed to Sylveon. It might still be able to bop it with an Iron Head. I still want it around it at the very least to Sack Fodder because this is going to do absolutely nothing. So I may as well, even if he did a crit, it wouldn't do much. Look, that... That bounced off Lebowski. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go for the Psychic here, hoping to see the Nida Queen and he reveals a light screen. And this kind of, this has me a little bit shook. I won't lie. I'm like, oh God. Uh, right. Um, I need to be careful here. What I don't want is I don't want the Sylveon coming in, wishing up on me somehow, and then pivoting out into the Nida Queen. That's my big fear, right? I don't want the Nida Queen getting wished back up. So what I'm going to do, I don't think he would go hard into Sylveon ever on a Neoligo, don't get me wrong. But I just don't want that light screen sticking around in five turns time when I, he's managed to position me right for his for his wish Sylveon. So I'm going to go into Bosch and I'm just going to defog. I want to get rid of the rocks that he's set up. I want to get rid of the screen that he's set up. So let me just defog and get rid of everything. As he reveals to be Flame Orb Latias and goes for the Calm Mind. And I'm like, okay, Flame Orb, Calm Mind. That makes perfect sense. When I saw the Flame Orb, I was like, this is definitely Calm Mind because... As I have already said, we get the defog off here. As I've already said, everything on my team that is physical under speeds Latte. So it's actually a, a, a stroke of genius, I think, by Howler to run this. Because you can burn everything slower than him. And he can raise his speed death in front of everything faster than him. Fantastic set. Really, really fantastic set. But I know that I have physical grain in the back. So I'm like, this is fine. I don't need to ever fear this Latte. Stay calm. No sweat. We're going to get my light screen up here. We've defogged away his light screen. We've defogged away his rocks. He's not going to be able to wish pass into the Nido Queen. That was my biggest fear, and it's not going to happen. So we're good. We're good, right? We're just going to get our light screen up, and we're going to Volt Switch out, I believe, here. That way we get in our Gren at a good, good range of health uh, on the Latte to really start attacking it and chipping it down. I'm pretty sure there's a Volt Switch. There we go. Bosch just Volt Switches out. We'll get in Jiraiya. Now, Night Slash won't kill from this range, and I absolutely do not want Greninja getting burnt, because if Greninja gets burnt, this thing can actually come in later in the game and do the same thing again, right? That, that That's my fear. I don't want him coming in on something he's faster than, like Bosch, later on in the game and recovering. So I think his best play is always to Psycho Shift here. If I'm special, he will eat it up anyway, and if I'm physical, he wants to get the burn on me. So I'm just going to U-turn out into Bosch. I don't expect to see him recover, not in the slightest. Uh, I expect to see the Psycho Shift, so we're just going to go out into Bosch as he does go for the Psycho Shift. And I'm like, yes! We've got this right. We know what's going on. I don't know what his last attacking move is. I'm assuming it's going to be like Stored Power or Dragon Pulse. I do have an immunity to either of those on my team. But I don't want Coco or Greninja getting burnt. Because like I said, they could both be pivotal for breaking this Latte at the late game. So I'm just going to Volt Switch out again. Uh, I know that he's going to go for the recover here. But this is going to put him low enough where he's going to think, Okay, he went for the U-turn last time. I know that I won't kill with Night Slash. He knows that I won't kill with Night Slash. But I'm starting to condition him, right? I'm starting to make him think, if, if I just keep spamming U-turn Volt Switch, U-turn Volt Switch, and he keeps trying to hit me with the Psycho Shift, he loses this war. He can't recover up fast enough. So he has to go for a recover in front of my Gren. I know that. He knows that. I've tried to condition him that way. So here I go for the Night Slash. If he burns me here, he's going to be so low that he will drop to his own burn anyway. And yes, then I have a burn Greninja, but he goes down. 
he clicks the recover and that's perfect because now he is in night slash range so it was all about conditioning my opponent and making sure that if i had to risk the burn on gren i did it at a point where i knew that he would go down regardless and would never be able to set this latty up again so here i just clicked the night slash again i could have gone for the u-turn perhaps i should have done uh but i wanted to make absolutely sure that i would kill the latty I didn't know if he would save it, but he goes into the end mega, not the Sylveon, which super surprises me. And here I start to get a bit suspicious, because I'm like, what is this Sylveon set? Like, he brought it in, and then he dipped it out on the uh, Kira Black. He brought it, he hasn't brought it in on a Night Slash, a very clear Night Slash or U-turn. I was never clicking a water move there, so that really surprised me. But we managed to get, uh, sorry, I, I'm, I'm, I'm too slow for the replay. Uh, so the reason that I don't stay in here against this Greninja, I should explain is because I don't know at this point if he is uh, Speed Boost or Tinted Lens. Tinted Lens is a phenomenal ability, and he could be Scarf Tinted Lens, and then he would kill my Gren. He still has that Latte in the back. Gren must be saved at all costs. I can never let Jiraiya go down while he has that Latte in the back. So we go hard into Nihaligo. Lebowski will take any hit from this thing. We know that for sure. Uh, and we just fire off the Thunderbolt. Uh, yes, it's a free switch into Nido Queen, but I want to make sure that we kill the... Um, Yan Mega. I don't, I don't want to mess around with it. It's getting speed boosts up. That makes it pretty scary. Uh, so I, I don't want to mess around with it. I just want to go for, this, uh, for the Thunderbolt. But here I stay in on the Nido Queen because I think, okay, if he rocks again, I want to put him so low that he never rocks again. Once I get another defog off. Or uh, if he attacks me, now I'm putting him at a range of health where he probably never gets rocks up in this game again, which makes Mega Pinsir incredible in this match. So, yes, we lose Lebowski, um, but, well, we nearly lose Lebowski, right? We were such a low range of health, Lebowski is pretty much useless. Uh, but we do kill the Nido Queen. So I'm like, that's well worth it. We get the Spadef boost, doesn't really matter. Um, I'm expecting to see, as I was say, I'm expecting to see the Latte come out here because he knows he can recover on me uh, and can't mind on me. So I'm like, that's fine. Lebowski has done its job. It has taken out the Nida Queen. The most important defensive check to my Tafu Koko is gone. Let's just get Bosch back in. So we get back in the Rotom Mo. And now this is the start of a longer series of plays. We have to play patient here. I have to make sure... I, I kind of conditioned him the first time to expect a U-turn. But here I feel like he's going to be unpredictable. Because I've been unpredictable, right? I, I've Night Slash sometimes. I've U-turned sometimes. I've been hard for him to get a handle on with my Greninja. And what that means is that because I don't... I think he doesn't know what I'll do. I can't guess what he'll do. <laughs> so I kind of, I guess, painted myself into a corner by doing that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to sit in with Bosch. And I'm going to pain split, make sure he never gets too high. You know, always keeping him down here at about sort of 80% and 85%. Uh, make sure we never get too low. Set up light screens, that kind of stuff. And I'm going to basically stall out some of his recovers. The reason being, I could sit in front of this thing all day until he attacks me. And at the point when he attacks me, he has to take another turn of uh, burn chip and on a turn that he's not getting any recovery. He will have to attack eventually because he won't want to run out of recovers. If he runs out of recovers, he's kind of boned, right? So he has to attack me eventually. Or he has to start worrying about preserving his recovers. So I want to make him think about that. I want to make him go longer without clicking recover. I want to get him as low as I possibly can. And I think I'm starting to do that at this point. I'm starting to say to him, look... You are never getting much health back off me. I'm pain splitting all the time. You are always going to stay at this 85% range. Go for another calm mind, please. So here I think is the turn where I expect him to do that. And I just volt switch out. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's the turn after. I think I go for another pain split here. I'm, I'm being less patient in this video than I was in the uh, in the actual match. There we go. I do just go for a pain split. I'm just basically showing him, you know, your recovers. I'm going to stall you out of them. I'm going to stall you out of recovers and you're going to be in a bad spot. So you're going to have to start saving them and calm minding and attacking. Uh, and so it's here I go for the Volt Switch, I think. I know he's going to Calm Mind this turn. Um, I can Volt Switch out. And he's going to take the Volt Switch chip. He's going to take the Flame Orb chip. And I've kind of pressured him to be wary of me. So we put him down to about 80% there. And then he's going to take the Burn chip. And he's going to put him about 75 like I said, that game, it seems pointless, but what I'm doing there is I'm just stalling out some recovers, putting a bit of pressure on my opponent, making him think about his plays, making him second guess himself a little bit, and now I can bring in the Greninja. And again, he has to decide, am I going to Night Slash or am I going to U-Turn? I'm going to U-Turn because I won't put him in a Flame Orb um, distance with the Night Slash, so I want to make sure that whenever I Night Slash, it either kills him or puts him in Burn distance. That's what I have to do with the Night Slash, uh, because if he burns my Greninja, it's going to be a bad time. And here he goes to the Psycho Shift, and I'm like, okay, that worked out perfect. Had he gone for a recover, I wouldn't have lost much, right? I'd have been back to square one, we'd have pain split a bit more, we'd have defogged a bit more, you know, we'd have stalled around for a bit longer. But 
it's not the end of the world that if he'd gone for the recover. And here he goes for the psychic. I think he's getting a bit sick of me pivoting around and he just wants to claim a kill on something. But Bosch, Bosch tanks it and lives with 3 HP. So now I have my Kieran Black in the back pretty low. I have my Bosch in the back pretty low and I have my Nila Ego in the back pretty low. It's not a great situation, but it does mean I have three potential sacks if I just have to start sacking things off. So that's actually really, really nice. And we get Greninja in here and this time we can click U-turn and it guarantees the KO. If he goes out into anything, it's just good chip. And he goes into the Yan Mega again and I'm like... What is this Yan Mega, right? I, I could have Rock Slide. Imagine if I Rock Slide there. I'm physical. Like, what, what is going on? Because what must a Sylveon be that he never goes into Sylveon, right? What 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 sort of a Sylveon set is it that he's just never bringing it in? This really... I, I was starting to get very suspicious of this Sylveon. So we get Mega Pinscrew for free here. That's what the U-turn gave us. And here I'm going to Quick Attack. I know he's going to Protect. Yes, I could Stealth Rock on the Protect and it would be fantastic. And it would be a great flex. But there is just no point. Like, he could expect me to SD on his Protect and just attack and do big damage. There is never any point for me to try and flex in this game, right? I don't need to. I don't need to. I'm in the driving seat. From turn one, I've been in the driving seat. And I need to maintain that offensive momentum by just attacking the things in front of me, pressuring my opponent, not trying to be big or clever. So we're just going to go for a quick attack again. Yes, it's an obvious Raikou switch. And I could have uh, could have rocks. I could have uh, exited. But look, that does maybe... That's a, definitely a three hit KO. Two more of those and you'll go down. Or maybe one frustration you might die to at this point. So I'm like, this is a solid, solid position. I'm going to sack off Bosch at this point. Bosch is doing nothing. I don't expect him to go for the light screen. But even if he does, I want to get in my Greninja to click Waterfall. So if he goes for the light screen, it's not the end of the world. Most of my uh, remaining threats are physical. It's going to be Mega Pinsir and Jiraiya trying to win this game for me at this point. So go into Jiraiya. I'm going to click Waterfall. This guarantees to knock out the Raikou unless he's really bulky, which he's the rash nature and stuff. He shouldn't ever be that bulky. So I think we'll be fine. And we go for the Waterfall. And this does pick up the KO on Gadzook to Latias. And that is a huge, huge weight off my mind because I didn't think he'd ever be able to get the Lati in and recover. But with Rotom so low, it, it was a slight concern. I had to play very offensively around that uh, Lati if he brought it back in. So we're good now. We're good. And we can just go into Lebowski on this thing. I expect him uh, to probably go for the Protect again. Uh, but he actually just straight up attacked. So had I stayed in an attack with Waterfall, I don't know if we would have picked up the KO on this thing. Maybe. Uh, it is pretty bulky. I'm not sure. We definitely could have just U-turned safely on him. But it doesn't matter. We go into the Bowski and we tank this. Uh, unless he's running HP ground. Uh, maybe Psychic. I don't know what his coverage is. He, he don't think he'd be able to kill me anyway. And he actually reveals a Tailwind. And this is... This is scary all of a sudden. This is really scary. I wish I'd kind of uh, been able to keep Rotom Mo as another sack in the back. Because now I think he gets three turns after this with double speed on his team. And I'm like, damn, like, is he just going to sweep me under Tailwind? What is this Sylveon that I've not seen yet? So we go for the Sludge Wave there on his Tailwind. Sludge Wave is free against his team. Without the Nida Queen, he has no resist to it. So it just made sense. And now I'm like, right, what's coming in? The Raikou? Like, we've already seen the Raikou just tickles me. I I'm not scared of Raikou. But he actually goes into Sylveon. And I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. And he goes for Hidden Power Ground. And I'm like, oh, okay, what kind of a Sylveon is this? Like, I was thinking Specs Hyper Voice. I was like, is that even going to KO near Ligo? And it actually turns out to be Life Orb Sylveon. So I'm like, that's why we haven't seen it all game. I've got to start as Tailwind. So I'm going to go into Kirim to do that. I'm pretty sure that um, Coco will outspeed. So I have a series of plays that I, in my mind that I want to make. The first one is making sure that he can't wish. I don't know if this thing has wish. But I want to make sure that he can't wish, attack, wish, attack, wish, attack, right? As he just hive voices me down, he can never wish in front of my uh, Kiram. I know I'll Oko him with Iron Head because he's offensive. So I force him to do that, take another round of uh, Life Orb, chip. And here we go into Coco, and I know I outspeed this thing. He could maybe wish this turn, uh, but if he wishes this turn, it gets my offensive threat in out of Tailwind. And that's what I want to do here. That's why I've made these plays. So we're just going to Volt Switch out. It does a whole lot to Sylveon. I've never seen a Volt Switch do that much to Sylveon before. Uh, and we go into Meta B. I guarantee to take a high voice if he attacks, and if he wishes, then I'm in with Mega Pinsa out of the uh, Tailwind. But he actually does attack, and we live. The only way he could have uh, killed me was with a crit, and then at that point, I could have just gone into Greninja and Waterford. Anyway, I wonder if he's going to have quick attack, and he does. Still catches me by surprise every time I see this tech, but I have seen it before. I do just frustration, because even if he quick attack there, Greninja guarantees to take one quick attack and KO it with Waterford. So my best play was to frustration to make sure that he couldn't wish up, or he couldn't go into this thing on me because quick attack or frustration into quick attack would have killed this thing so that's why we made that play and now i am just going to quick attack for that chip and you can see here what i mean if i had frustration the turn before 
that quick attack then would have picked this thing off. I just didn't want to give him any free switches, so uh, he thunderbolts and we go down. But both of my remaining mons do outspeed this Raikou, and we are able to pick up the 2-0 victory with Jiraiya coming in and just clicking waterfall. So nice having physical grind, not having to risk a hydro miss or anything like that. <laughs> just being able to click waterfall and guarantee the win there. So, whoo, great game. GG to my man, Platinum Howler. Fantastic match. Um, my throat is hurting because that was such a long one. Uh, and there's a lot of players I had to try and remember. But yeah, really, really good game. Thoroughly, thoroughly difficult game. This was, uh, just to be self-indulgent for a moment, if you guys have been around the channel for a while, you know this. I've been on a bit of a uh, barren run as of late. I uh, haven't really been playing that well. I've made playoffs consistently in, in a lot of leagues, um, but then just haven't been playing super great when I got to playoffs. And even in the regular season, especially Owl, I just played super badly. So... This was finally a better performance for me. I am super satisfied with the way I played this game. Um, that's not meant in a disrespectful way to my opponent at all, who I also thought played very, very well, actually. And like I said, I think his last set was a borderline of stroke of genius. I think that was a, an excellent set against me. But uh, yeah, it is. It, it just feels good. It feels good to get back to winning ways and to get back to a performance that I can hold my head up and be proud of. So yeah, very, very, very happy with that. Anyway, as I say, GG to my man, Platinum Howler. Please go check out his side of the battle. I cannot wait to find out what his Infernape was, uh, what exactly he had on his Sylveon, all his investments. I know he's doing a team builder, which will have been up the day before this, so I would recommend checking that out as well, or maybe the day this goes up, I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, I can't wait. Can't wait to find out how he built and how he played. Uh, I, I, I loved this battle. I thought this was one of our better battles for a while, so GG to him. I always try to take something away from the battles on this channel. If you guys have been around the channel for a while, you will know. And if you haven't and you're new here, then thank you for joining me. Uh, one of the things that I always say is this channel is about learning. I don't pretend to be the best draft league player in the world, but I want to keep learning and developing. I think one of the things that was really, really pivotal from this match to take away for all of us, if as a community we're trying to learn together, is that once you get yourself in a strong position in Pokemon battles, if you get the first, you know, five to ten turns correct, and it's a long game and you're in the driving seat, Please, please, please do not play Reckless. It's a mistake I used to make all the time, making aggressive doubles, making aggressive plays, making aggressive predictions. Once you're in the driving seat, you can make the safe plays. You don't need to do that. If you establish your control over the game in the first five to 10 turns, you don't need to do that. If you're in the back and you're struggling, by all means, start making plays. Start making those plays that sends the chat wild on showdown. Start doing that stuff. But if you're winning and you think you can win by making the safe play every turn, make the safe play every turn. Like you saw that in this game. That's exactly what I did. Yes, we tried to make some plays in terms of conditioning my opponent to expect pain split, in terms of conditioning him to expect U-turn. We tried to make those kind of plays, um, but they were always calculated. There was always a reason why I made them because I always knew that I wouldn't lose the game if the risk didn't pay off, right? Risk versus reward is huge in Pokemon, and I think that was very well illustrated with the Greninja Latia situation, right? I only ever night, slish, night slashed when I knew that he would die to burn damage anyway. So that, that way, if I essentially lost the usability of my Greninja with a burn, at least I would get rid of the thing Greninja was designed to check. So anyway, yeah, that's that's my kind of ramble over. Um, I just think it's important to talk about these things sometimes. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. My voice is killing me now. I hope the rest of the battles are a bit shorter than this. This was like a 50 turn game. So it was a, it was a doozy, but I, I really, really enjoyed it. Regardless, thank you so much for loafing around with me, guys, and I'll catch you again next time.